and last he appeared to me as to one of normally born. See, why we believe in God, main reason, main, main, is a couple of things. Jesus lived on this earth, physical life in history. Jesus died, and Jesus came down, back to life again. And everything else builds on that. You see, there's, there, this was a historical event, event. and I, I was surprised when I started reading some books, looking at, on the internet, there are, there are debates between people who say that Jesus did not rise and people who did rise and they bring historical kind of little data. We'll go through a little bit of it, but that's not my point to talk, to talk here. The thing is, we can confidently say, yes, Jesus came back to life. And I'll go through, uh, through a couple of these things. First, Paul's conversion. The fact that a person who hated this idea, he thought he was serving God, converted to Christianity. And it's, and it's nobody will argue with that when you will say Paul converted to Christianity. Because Paul was a real person in history, nobody can deny that. I've heard some people who try to deny Jesus as, as a historical figure. And, they, and it's, it's very erroneous in their way, uneducated. But Paul, he wrote about it. He hated Christianity. And for, to prove to someone who is totally against it, that's big proof, just in history. And Paul wrote about Jesus' life just maybe 15 years after, after everything happened. And usually you don't find that in history. But those are not facts why, why you believe in but those are just reasons why you can come to that conclusion, where somebody can, can come closer. And then on top of that, God changes lives. And God does everything else. Another thing, the, uh, James, the Lord's brother, Galatians 1.19, you can read it there. James was a brother, he grew up with this guy, with a uh, person named Jesus, and he's like, this guy's a little crazy. And then when he rose from the dead, he's like, yeah, if I can convince my brother, that I'm something important and maybe divine. I think I'm a very convincing person, or it's true. Or it's true. Church started in Jerusalem. And if you're gonna start a lie, you better go somewhere where people don't know you, or people don't know what's, going, uh, what's happening. It started in the middle where people were alive to this room and say, hey, this is not holding me. You're all lying, I can go to the tomb. I can go and check it out. Another thing. And they lived throughout that way. And those people were willing to die for what they believed in. We know that for sure. Well, wait. Muslims are willing to die for what they believe in? That's not a proof. Well, if you convince me of something, that if I, uh, that if I put my hand in this break it circuit and, and I'm going to die in the, in the, as a result, but I'm going to save a bunch of people and you tell me that and I'm convinced and I do it and I'll lose my life for that. But if you know it's not true, you're not going to do it. Those people knew what was true and they could not, people who knew, know something is false will not die for that kind of idea. So you see, this is the primary reason, primary thing. Did Jesus live? Did Jesus die? Did Jesus come back to life? And maybe you have to do a lot of studying on your own to make sure that you're grounded in that. Because things like, in one gospel it says that Jesus was going into Jericho when he healed uh, Bartimaeus. And the other one says he was going out of Jericho when he, when he healed Bartimaeus. And then somebody comes to you and says, look! Look what your Bible says. Main question is whether Jesus lived, died, and rose again. Now, there are answers to those questions. All the other ones about, about people at the tomb, there's answers to those. And you can look them up yourself. But this is the main thing. And second point I want to talk about. Second thing very important that our faith is built, uh, built on. And why, when somebody asks you why you believe in God, you can start with this one. I want to read 1 Corinthians 2, 4, 5. This is Paul writing to the church in Corinth. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith shall not stand on the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I'll tell you guys a story. A story about a person named Anatoly. It's about me. I woke up one morning, I think it was 2010, January. 
I went downstairs into the garage to pray. I usually did that at that time. Now I can pray in my room. There's nobody in, in my room. All my brothers went to Seattle to study. But I went to pray. And I started praying. And I have a feeling that I do not believe in God at all. Completely. Like God does not exist. And that I never believed in God. It's an interesting feeling. It's very scary. And I'm like, what's going on? What in the world is going on? Nobody told me anything yesterday weird. I wasn't thinking about something much. There was different encounter, uh, encounters with atheist debates and stuff like that. But it didn't really uh, boggle me much. It was, it was just something I was, okay, I got to research this, got to look into that. I wake up. And I'm scared. There's... It, it's, I cannot imagine, I, I remember the experience, but I cannot imagine how my mind was working at that time and right now. I can't, I can't even think that way right now. And I thought to myself, if it's so sudden, it's really weird. Usually things come gradually. And to myself, I was thinking, it's probably something spiritual. How about I take a fast? So next day, I don't eat. Fasting and praying. And I get up and I pray and I'm like, hmm. Seems like I do believe in God. Awesome. This is great. And the next day, I'm not fasting back to where I was. I, like I never believed in God. And I told God, I'm like, you know, I, if you're not going to help me through this, I'm not going to go talk to people. I'm not going to go read in books in, against or for Christian. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to pray and I'll let you fix this. Because you, you're powerful to do this. This was maybe my test to God. And I said this. God, if I don't see your glory in my life, I will not, I will die. I was afraid to say. I was afraid to say aloud. If, if I don't see your glory in my life, I will deny Christianity and I will not be able to be a Christian. I was afraid to say that out loud. But that's what I was meaning. See, and from then on I started praying to God. I need to see your glory to go this way, to follow you. This is what Paul says. He's like, that your faith might be uh, not stand on the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Expression. You experience it. Glory of God. If somebody comes up and starts talking and they're like, I was there and I was about to kill my wife and kids, this is actually a true story, not mine, and, uh, and, and then he, just recently, recently he talked to a Christian guy, and the Christian guy gave him a Bible, so he's like, no, I'm going to just read the Bible because I said I'm going to read, uh, read the Bible, so he reads it, and he reads the whole New Testament all the way through, and then in his mind he starts talking to himself, God was speaking to him, he's like, I don't have to kill him, I don't have to kill him. He was, he was mad at them for some reason. He was a big criminal in Russia. And then, and then he thought, you know God, it's kind of funny. You're saving their life right now and they're never going to thank you. They're so selfish. Imagine the thought process of a man. And, and then he's like, and I had another thought, but you can thank me. I saved your life too because you were going to kill yourself too. He's like, yeah, so I will thank you. And then his life changed and everybody's life changed. But you see, if I tell you this story, I tell you the story, this is, this is already a third person story. When, the, when things come up and tension begins in your mind between other people, it's not as strong unless it's your own story. This is not about seeing God's glory. Yes, we see God's glory when somebody testifies and says, but it's supposed to be here, here. See, God works in steps, but sometimes it comes out of steps. We can see God glory distance, somebody say it, talking about it. Around us, when we see it happening in other life, and they don't have to tell us it's happening. We see, so they're going through trouble, something's going on, something, some kind of resolution, or, 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 or a thing comes up. But third, we can see God working through our life. This is what we need to strive for. We need, I need to see God's glory. I need to see His glory. Moses said, show me your glory. He was talking to God. He said, 
You're already talking to God. What more do you want? I want to see your glory. See, what does it mean to see the glory of God? What does it mean to see the glory of God? See, if I, if I see a vision, even very vivid, and I see God, and I'm like, oh, I saw Jesus. It's not going to... Somebody who believes in God, that, they're like, wow. Did you really see him? What did he tell you? But if somebody who doesn't believe, it's not going to change their mind. It's not, gonna, it's not really the glory of God that affects other people. Because when God starts working through your life, it consumes. People really, they're like, ah. they listen to your testimony, whatever happened. And they're like, okay, I'll think about it. They have nothing to say against it. This is the way people, you talk a lot of times to people who do not believe in God. It's, you see, stories when people who have their kids, there's, there's a story, um, my friend, he worked in AT&T and there's a customer that come to them often. She was always a cheery African-American woman, just like full of joy, uh, working in a church. And one day she comes, she's not very cheery at all. He said, what happened? She's like, well, my son was just shot, killed he recently. He's like, he couldn't say anything. And she started telling the story. It's like, they called me. I said, you need to go check out the body. We think it's your son. And he's shot. And as she go in there, she's praying inside. She's like, what's going on? And right away, the Holy Spirit telling her in her heart, you need to forgive that person. So she comes there. She, see, she sees her child. She, she prays there and then goes. She's like, I want to go talk to that person. She goes talk to him. And says, you did this, but I forgive you. And Jesus loves you, and I do too. The guy first was looking at her and said, what do you want kind of face? And then he started crying, weeping. His life was changed. But same thing with other people's stories, stories uh, told when they were watching a court. And this, this evil, evil man killed a lot of people. Killed a lot of big kids. And they're the parents. And they're, the parents basically are talking uh, to this guy and saying, let this happen to you. They're cursing the guy. And then one couple gets up and says, you did this horrible thing. But we forgive you. Because Jesus forgave us. I remember the words. He started crying. The power of God. My teacher, he's a agnostic more it's kind of like an atheist but he's not an anti-religion guy it's interesting very interesting to talk to him he told me a story he's like my son he was a uh, Quaker it's a it's a denomination of, of Christians and he was dying from cancer I think he was 26 he was dying from cancer and we came and talked with him often he really wanted me to accept his faith he really wanted wanted me to it but I was just so moved so it spoke to me a lot how his faith he was in such tremendous pain that nothing helped already and his faith let him he could separate it all and talk to me and he it really talked to me and when my brother my brother who was abused by some people who were who were religious or something happened negative he starts bashing on christianity and other things i say hey wait stop remember my son remember what happened the power of God was shown there. See, God a lot of times speaks to other people how we go through our trials, through our worst of times. You see, He has to start working through us. And for that, you have to seek Him and go out and start sharing. Start sharing. Don't sit in your bottom. For me, for me to, to see the glory of God, it means what I'm praying because that from that point on it started to be my prayer to God and and started started um, praying God show me your glory I need to see your glory otherwise I will die and that was my prayer and it still is my prayer it's a passionate prayer that I pray to God almost every day for me to see God's God, God's glory is to see somebody who's lost hope find hope 
for people's lives to be changed dramatically. For my atheist cousin, come back to, to Jesus. And yes, you guys, you guys think that you can just sit in your spots and, and just go to church and not go deeper into God and seek for His glory and see His glory and say, God, I need to see Your glory. And just sit there and it's like, it will, it will kind of just roll by. I'm not, I'm not going to go all the way in. I'm not going to go the other direction. Of course not. God forbid. Otherwise I'll have a cursed family or what. Whatever reasons keep you sometimes from go, going away. You think it's on the easy you will fly? No. My cousin, he, he was a really strong Christian. I just recently talked to him when he, uh, last summer. We talked for four hours one day, three hours another time. Interesting conversation. For me to see God's glory is to see people who do not believe in God come to Jesus. For people who are suicidal to find, to find hope. For people who have no hope to find, for, to find God. That's what it means to, to me. And then you will find out God more. And nobody will trade God for anything in your life. Kind of like a kid, you can give him a hundred bucks and then trade that hundred bucks for a candy because they don't know how much it's worth. We have to know how much God is worth. And my last point, no one, absolutely no one, saw God's glory unless they paid the price or willing to pay a price. The price for our salvation has been paid. We don't have to pay anything. But if you watch from Moses to David, Samuel, anybody, Paul, the apostles, all oh, the glory of God, none of them would have seen it unless they were willing to pay the price. What price? It might be different for your life. Just ask yourself, God, I'm willing to pay the price. Maybe that means you don't go out with friends every Sunday and you just study the word. Maybe it means that you, you are the odd, odd person and you talk to God, talk to people about God when you're in, in, in just a store. People look at you weird. Maybe it means you're going to be very different. But if you're not willing to pay a price, the price on your knees, the price with reading the Bible, the price with going out and stepping over your comfort zone, just ripping away fear. This is something I'm talking to myself too. You will not see the glory of God. You will not. But this is why we're going to pray right now. Let's get up on our feet. We're going to just pray that you guys, everyone in their heart, when you come home, you can just say, right now, and there, God, whatever the price is, I'm willing Whatever, however the pain, how, however intense the pain, pain is, my, I'd rather suffer that, but I'd rather see your glory. This is how bad you need to want it. You're like, I don't care. I don't care if I have to lose everything, but if I see your glory. And then God will start changing things in your life. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be, it's not going to be just another sugar cake. It's going to be hard. It's going to be harder than what you're doing right now. But you're going to go through it and you're going to go, it's more than worth it. And you will have stories like your grandparents. Jesus, thank you so much for today. Thank you for all the people here. We pray to you and we ask you, Jesus. We need to be grounded in your word, but also to understand what, uh, why we believe in you. So we might have reasons. When people come up and say to us, we will say this and this, is God doing in my life yesterday? This is He doing today. Lord, I can't go on if I don't see your glory. And this year I've seen your glory like never before. I've seen your glory like never before. But I know I haven't seen that amount that I need to. I want to see more of your glory. How Moses said. Oh Lord, unless you bring your glory down to us and show it through us, we will die. We won't be able to go. But this is why we say, God, whatever the price is, whatever it is, take me. I will go. I'd rather go into your glory. I'd rather step into your kingdom. I'd rather have a life that's worthy, a life that's interesting to live. Interesting inside your glory. It might be painful. It might hurt, but it will be inside your word.
and inside your will, oh God. Help it what you have brought to be inside our minds. To work through our hands, Jesus. Forever. Let the people get spoiled. That pray that prayer. Come home and pray it again. Pray it again, not just here. Not just here. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys can be seated. Walter well, is going to sing a song and then we'll have a brother share. around the corner, you know, like two more months, and um, we're going to be celebrating Easter when our Lord Jesus rose from the dead, and um, this song um, is called um, Alive in Us, um, I want to sing it for the glory of God. Yeah. 
Good evening, you beautiful people. And then you, I love your church. I love your church. I was so sick last night, I couldn't sleep. I was really feeling bad, awful. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. And then this morning, again, I was half dozing off, but I couldn't sleep because of the pain. I had an abdominal pain. And I said, Lord, I want to be tonight in this church where I was last Sunday night. How are you going to do about it? And uh, about 11 o'clock this morning, I dozed off. And just before fall, uh, falling asleep, I said, Lord, if you want to be, if you want, if you want me to be there again this Sunday evening, you know what you have to do. Fall asleep. 3.30 afternoon, I wake up absolutely brand new. I had a huge lunch. I just feel great. And this is what the Lord is doing. Uh, I'm impressed by what I just heard from this brother. He's searching for things from God. I'm searching for things from God. And the Lord has promised me to lead me in a new form of a ministry that I've never had before. And I hope through that ministry I will be a, a, a blessing for a lot, a lot of children of God from various churches, from various denominations. There is a big need. I see the need in the young generation. I don't see it so much among our older folks that are so...